Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris. This is uh, epic. an Epic History TV PMF product. You shut your face. I was talking. Take the closed captions off there. Okay. So this was uh, Napoleon in Italy, Part 4, Battle of... I want to say Arcole, but I'm sure it's like Arcola or... I don't know. Western Philadelphia. Yeah, you know, however you pronounce it. So this was a request, but this was not a donated request. But I also hadn't finished the series. And um, so this is part four. I'm going to do part five next. This will be a two-parter because of the length of the video. Um, my Lions whooped the Packers last night. So let's get into the video. Actions collaboration. In 1796, at the height of the French Revolutionary Wars, a young French general took charge of a ragged, demoralized army in northern Italy. Oh, that general was um, Stephen Lagermore. That's who were the videos about, I think. It was his first command. Many expected him to fail. Instead, in just one month, he won his first brilliant campaign. With astonishing self-confidence, boldness and energy, he led his army to victory after victory. Transforming the war in Europe, winning praise from a grateful republic, and forging a legend. This is the story of Napoleon Bonaparte's first campaign. All right, so I was wrong. And the dawn of a new age. I'm eating cider donuts and drinking October apple cider. 1796. I visited an orchard, so my apologies. Six months have passed since General Napoleon Bonaparte took command of the French Army of Italy. In that time, he's led a series of brilliant operations against the Austrians and won a string of battles. Now he appears close to final victory. He's driven Austrian field forces off the plains of northern Italy, back towards the Alps. While his troops have the great fortress city of Mantua, the key to Italy, under close siege. Mantua's oversized Austrian garrison is nearing starvation and riddled with disease. Napoleon appeals to its commander, Field Marshal von Wurmser, to surrender. The brave should be facing danger, not swamp plague, he jibes. But Wurmser is a tough old veteran. He will not yield while any glimmer of hope remains. And he knows that to the north, Austria is gathering fresh troops to march to his aid. True, many are Grenz battalions a type of Habsburg frontier militia, poorly drilled and short of officers. But they help raise the strength of the Austrian field army to 44,000. And they have a new general to lead them, Feldzeugmeister or Lieutenant General Josef Alvinci. The 61-year-old Hungarian was once military tutor to Emperor Francis himself. Look at that name. He could have. To I've I've heard his name. Couldn't tell you what it was. Look at that guy. Jeez. What and is regarded as diligent, sharp, and brave. He and his staff draw up plans for a fresh offensive to rescue Wormser and Mantua. Alvinci and Kostanovich will lead the main column, 26,000 strong, from Friuli to Bassano, then onwards to Mantua. Davidovich's corps, reinforced to 18,000, will retake Trento and push south 
through the Adige Valley. The two forces will link up at the earliest opportunity. Meanwhile, Wurmser, who can muster just 12,000 fit men from the Mantua garrison, will launch powerful sorties to pin down as many French units as possible. Napoleon, by contrast, has received very few reinforcements from France. His weary divisions are suffering from shortages and sickness, and will be outnumbered on every front. Alvinzi begins his advance on the 22nd of October. The following day, the heavens open, drenching troops, swelling rivers, and reducing roads to mud. For the time being, Napoleon is content to observe the enemy struggle forward in such conditions, knowing the effort will exhaust his infantry and disrupt supplies. On the 2nd of November, fighting breaks out north of Trento, where Napoleon has ordered Vaubois to attack. He wants to keep Davidovich bottled up, but Vaubois is heavily outnumbered, and his attack fails. Vaubois begins pulling back to Caliano, while Massena gives up Bassano and withdraws towards Vicenza. But now Alvinci's advance becomes strung out, slowed by the heavy rain and poor fitness of his recruits. And it is against Napoleon's nature to remain passive for so long. As the Austrians cross the Brenta, he orders Massena to attack General Lipte's division at Fontaniva, while Augereau attacks Hohenzollern at Bassano. The French launched dozens of separate assaults. But for all their poor march discipline, the Austrian recruits stand their ground and fight hard. With around 3,000 casualties on each side, the Second Battle of Bassano is the bloodiest day's fighting so far in the Italian campaign. And a failure for Napoleon. Hours later, he receives dire news from Vaubois. During heavy fighting at Caliano, some Croatian troops get behind the French line, triggering panic and a rout. Vaubois loses nearly half his division, killed, wounded or missing, before he can regroup at Rivoli. The French are falling back on all fronts, and unless Napoleon can conjure something remarkable, he seems destined to suffer a major strategic defeat. And this group over here, where is my mouse? My mouse is not. Come on, Mr. Mouse, where are you? Why aren't you moving? All right. This, is this... Mr. Mouse, is this how your mom raised you? Don't tell me you're already a bad battery. I just got you a couple days ago. Okay. So, so that happened, and my apologies. So anyways, what I was going to say, there, this group right here, the Croatians got behind them, Shh, quiet. Croatians got behind him, triggering a panic. They're all running. This unit is probably running to maybe to get to a certain point. They're running in a pure panic, so it's just going to cause them to freak out because they think they're running and they're right on their tail, which it looks like they're not, but of course they could be. But yeah, that's... You're... You're... If you're in this first group here, this group here is not going to let you stop. They're just go, 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 go. Your 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 best bet is to try to put up some kind of defense, because your own fear is what's avalanching everything. Not that I've been in that position, but I'm just saying, like you you, you start to see things like that. Fear causes a snowball reaction, a chain reaction for other things, and once one person runs. 
somebody sees them and then they run and then two people see the two people and then they start running and it's just you know that's how it gets it's it's crazy this video is sponsored by g2a the online marketplace for all your digital products if you can name it they've got it from games to operate Soldiers, you abandon yourselves to panic. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's what I was just saying. They panicked, and then the others were all forced to just run because they didn't know what was happening. You're no longer. Wow. Kicked them out. Wow. Okay. Napoleon's position is perilous, but his enemy's cautious pursuit affords him some respite. Four whole days pass while Alvinci and Davidovich coordinate their next moves. It's not a delay Napoleon would have tolerated if the shoe had been on the other foot. When the Austrians finally advance, it's bungled. Hohenzollern's vanguard approaches Verona to investigate reports of a French retreat. This isolated division is too tempting for Napoleon to ignore. He orders Augereau and Massena to attack. They inflict 400 casualties, but Hohenzollern escapes to a ridge near Caldiero. The next day, Napoleon orders renewed attacks. But conditions are atrocious. The French struggle uphill into driving rain and hail, their boots slipping in the mud, under fire from Austrians dug in on the ridgetop. Around noon, Colonel Dupuy's 32nd Demi Brigade finally gets onto the ridge. It looks like the French may be able to lever the Austrians out of their position. But then, the Austrian army begins to arrive in force to support Hohenzollern's hard-pressed division. The French are in danger of being outflanked on both wings. They take up new defensive positions and hold the line until darkness, when Napoleon cuts his losses and orders a retreat to Verona. It has been an unequivocal French defeat. Napoleon's first in battle. The following day, he writes furiously to the Directory in Paris. He has no doubt that they are to blame for his defeat, for repeatedly failing to send reinforcements. We may be on the verge of losing Italy. None of the expected help has arrived. The army of Italy, reduced to a handful of men, is worn out. The heroes of Lodi, Millesimo, Castiglione and Bassano have died for their country or are in the hospitals. The men have nothing left but their reputation and their pride. We are abandoned in the depths of Italy. But despite his apparent despair, Napoleon has already devised a plan to strike back. A breathtakingly bold move that will spawn one of the greatest of Napoleonic legends. I, for some reason, I just kind of felt that there was a... YouTube is the new home of NFL... It is. Yep, I know. You don't have to sell to me, I already got it. So. With the Austrians converging on Verona, Napoleon decides to risk everything on a daring surprise attack. Leaving Macard to cover Verona, 
he will circle south with the rest of the army, cross the Adige River and swing north, threatening to cut Alvinci's lines of communication and capture his artillery, baggage and supplies. Such losses will force Alvinci to abandon his advance. Marching overnight, Augereau and Massena arrive undetected at Ronco. Augereau's men cross the Adige on a pontoon bridge and begin moving north. But with marshland on all sides, they have to stick to the narrow, raised causeway, just 20 yards wide. And when they reach Arcole, where they must cross the bridge to continue north, they find it held by two Croatian battalions. Horribly exposed on the causeway, and under heavy fire, the French troops take cover behind its reverse slope. Reinforcements are sent up, but they too are pinned down by the weight of fire from the far bank. Colonel Lann had discharged himself from hospital that morning in order not to miss the battle. He now attempts to lead a charge, but is hit in the leg. The fiery Augereau refuses to accept defeat and orders another attack. But his men are exhausted and demoralised, with three generals wounded. The attack at Arcole has stalled. When Alvinci hears gunfire from the south, he assumes the French are making a feint to divert him from his own planned attack on Verona. But then comes alarming news that the French have crossed the Adige in force and are behind his left flank. He sends two brigades to attack the French bridgehead and diverts Mitrovsky to reinforce Arcole. Masena's division, moving northwest to protect the flank of the advance, runs straight into the Austrians at Bionde. At first, the Austrians have the better of it. But a disastrous friendly fire incident triggers panic, and Masena drives the Austrians back up the causeway. No. That just shows you that sometimes in battle, luck is just as good as intelligence and everything else because luck can happen things just happen accidents accidents happen but yeah, you have to be able to take advantage of those when they happen fortunately it happened and they just ran away which now they're charging after him it kind of gives them the upper hand don't know how many men are here because you know that's probably where they're going but they don't want to get too far away from their guys who are pinned down either I would think I don't know Napoleon is increasingly concerned by the holdup at Arcole. If they cannot break through, Alvinci will have ample time to redeploy and prevent any advance. He now orders General Gear to take two regiments, cross the Adige at Alberedo, and lead them up the eastern bank of the Alpone River to hit Arcole from the south. He himself rides to the bridge to try to get the attack moving. He fight. I'm gonna go back. Just a, just a little bit, right there. We're gonna stop it here. For part two, Arcole. Is that what it was? Battle of Arcole? Yeah, I would have never got that. So, there's a thanks button on the channel. You could donate if you'd like. Um, donations are appreciated um, if you do donate you can give a uh, request for some videos you don't have to if you don't want to you can just you know say thank you much appreciated uh, there's a subscribe subscribe button let's try that again you can click it 
if you've watched several videos and you haven't subscribed, just subscribe. It's free. It's fine. Um, give a thumbs up. If you want to give a thumbs down, you can. Unfortunately, there is a thumbs down virus that's going around. Oh, hit my light. Thumbs down virus going along. And uh, everyone who gets it, they bleed from their anus a lot. So I'm just saying, why risk it? You know what I mean? And until next time, oh, let's see if this new keyboard will work properly. Until next time, have a good day, have a good night.